What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. Shout out to the joiners. Shout out to Point of View crew. And hey, shout out to the homie Knox from the Barrio. It's a good homeboy right there. Shout out, much love and respect to you and yours, brother. And shout out to my good friend, Luciana. Check out this beautiful painting that she made for me. I love it. And I'm going to be rearranging the art wall soon and very, very soon. This is going to go right here, front and center. Some of the things that are up there now are going to be taken down. There's going to be things that you don't see. They're going to be putting up. So it's going to be switched around. And you can send me something. I'll throw it up there. Bleed at. So, hey, dude, life could change like that, can't it? Life could change so, so quick. Dude, expect the unexpected and never get too comfortable. Bro, I, might, I myself, I'll never get too comfortable. People are so unpredictable. Bro, let me add this, though. A couple years ago, I was working this job. I was working for this company. It got a little slow, and my boss wanted me to help him put sprinklers in the front yard. He had a big yard, and he had lots of sprinklers. There was lots of digging to be done, and that's where I came in. Because I dug all kinds of holes, like yay deep. What is that? Two and a half, three feet deep, bro. All over the yard. Bunch this way, a bunch this way, some caddy corner, some connecting, some tons of... Dude, I was digging and raking, spraying with the water hose all day, all night digging and then when I got a good portion done up in the top corner I started to make progress down at the bottom of the yard my boss who had been working alone up at this point doing the sprinklers called in like a youngster like a nephew a friend of a friend some young kid on vacation called him in to help him do the sprinklers to do all the pipe fitting the measuring the cutting hey give me one nine foot put it in glue it Give me a T. Give me a 90. Gluing sprinklers. No, it's not quite right. They're, they're doing all the pipe fitting and I'm... And I'm thinking, shouldn't I be doing the pipe fitting? And this young should be doing the digging? It's the same thing on the job I'm on now. And I'm just grateful to, to be working, bro. Especially this current climate. i am doing been working at this triplex. Preparing it for paint. So I'm in this unit. They put the sheetrock up. It's a mess. I got the scraper. I'm scraping the floor. I'm sweeping. I'm vacuuming the walls. I'm sweeping the walls. I'm wiping down the ceiling. I'm taping. I'm wiping. I'm scrubbing. I'm throwing trash away. And then today, my boss calls in some youngster to help him put in, who's on Christmas vacation, to help him put in the countertops. And all the, where the oven goes, and all the, the countertops, the countertops, the cabinets, that's where I was looking for. The cabinets, homeboy. Now I'm mostly just poking fun. I know it's a family member he called in there, he's probably trying to show him the ropes. But while I'm scraping and sweeping and scrubbing, some young kid's in there with, pop, with a nail gun. Pop, pop, another tool. And I'm like, shit, not be with a nail gun. Pop, pop. And the kid be like, I'm gonna start at the bottom. But no. Hey, homeboy. Glad to be working. I'll scrape all day, any day. Let's get to this story, brother. Let's get to this story. But first, will you please allow me to say, I consider it a personal favor. I don't trip on females, bro. I don't trip on them. In the context of no communication, some sort of confrontation, you know, things get cold. There's a pullback. There's a pause. Things get confusing. Dude, I don't cry. I don't chase. I don't beg. I have myself in check when it comes to that. I won't allow myself to do it. I'm not a sociopath. I'm not saying I could date someone for many moons and then there's some sort of breakup, whatever. And I'm just like, oh, well, hi-ho, cheerio. But I'm saying, homeboy, I have myself in check to the point where I don't cry and I don't beg. Because I look at it like there's a, some sort of breakdown. And I look at this in all my relationships. I think I'm a swell guy. I treat people with love and respect. If there's some kind of breakdown, bro, it's you, not me. I mean, I will be open to it. I'm not blinded. Like, it's always your fault, never my fault. I just can't see me, like, 
picking a fight and just like endangering a relationship with him with anybody. And, and so like if there's a breakdown, yeah, homeboy, it's, it's you, not me. And I'm not going to cry about it and I'm not going to beg and I'm not going to chase. It is what it is, brother. I got myself in check. And I think I'm in the 5%, top 5% from what I've been told. Because most guys will do that, beg and chase and cry. Dude, one of the first times I ever did cell living, Wasco A Yard. Up to this point, I've only done dorms. I've been on the farm at Kern County Jail. I've been in dorms at Wasco Reception. I was in a dorm, H dorm at Wasco Reception. They moved us all to A Yard. A Yard Reception, sales. I go in, door shuts behind you. It's a little small little room. It's kind of, I was a little claustrophobic. I kept feeling like I was going to drown. I thought water was going to come under the cell door, fill up the cell, and I was going to be like, Doggy paddling until I filled up all the way. I just thought I was gonna drown. There's a crazy ass fly flying around. I'm not gonna even notice. I'm not gonna beat it up right now. Look, there, there it goes. I, I, I felt like I was gonna drown in the cell. It was kind of like a trip. You get used to it pretty quick. The cellie, his name was Scooter from Orange County. And we're kicking back one day talking. And he goes, Man, you love her, huh? And I was like, What? I was like, What do you mean? He goes, Charlotte. Dude, I was totally taken back. Uh, I, did, I did, did have a girlfriend named Charlotte at that time, and she hadn't been writing me. I was kind of stressed on it, but I didn't know why he was saying it to me. I was like, why? What do you mean? He goes, you won't quit talking about her. Dude, my face got so red, and I don't turn red with embarrassment. I did right then and there, though, and hot. Palms sweaty, so embarrassed. I would have rather been doggy paddling in the middle of the cell and drowning than have this dude say to me, you love her, huh? You won't quit talking about her. I was so embarrassed. There was a long, awkward pause. I didn't know what to say. I was like, well, you want to read this book? I didn't, dude, it was uh, awkward, and I felt kind of weird the duration of living with them. Part of me did. And from then on, I never, ever brought up no other chick in jail or the streets, anywhere. Upset over a breakup, never cried about it. Then I started noticing people who did. I, I saw this one dude, he traded his whole dinner tray. His dinner tray, and it was hamburger night. Trade his dinner tray to this other inmate so that so that when that inmate was talking to his people on the phone, he could have them do a three-way. Which I can't really explain what a three-way is. But this person did a three-way so that this guy who no longer has a dinner tray because he gave it away is able to talk to his people for a quick minute. Which three-ways aren't that good because you still got other people on the line. So they're eavesdropping and it's like, whatever, a three-way. I can't get into him. His whole dinner tray, that's how desperate he was. He talked to his chick, bro. And hey, if she loved you and she wanted to talk to you, she would have made a way for you to talk to her, brother. Somehow. She obviously ain't trying to hear it. Trade his dinner tray, hamburger night, for a three-way, dude. And didn't even get through. I mean, I saw the transaction take place. I look away. Next thing I know, dude with no dinner tray sent myself over in the corner. I was like, what happened? Phone call end already? She wasn't home. Couldn't, couldn't get through nobody. And then I look at the other dude and he's got two burgers. He's got double fisted up. Ooh. I'm like, dude, you should have said if, no, if I if couldn't get through, you're not going to get the tray. Add that stipulation in there. Can I get a three way? I'll give you my tray. If no one answers, I keep the tray. Something. I don't know. Just don't. Bro. Uh uh. And then, one time I'm in prison, I tell someone I'm from Rex and Acres, a neighborhood in Bakersfield. Dude says, Oh, do you know so and so? One of my homeboys. I was like, yeah, I know him. I thought he was going to say he's a good dude. He saw he does this. And, you know, I thought he was going to talk good about it. I was like, yeah, I know him. This is my homeboy. And he said, uh, he has a girlfriend named Crystal, huh? And I said, yeah. And he said, dude, I was doing time with that dude. He wouldn't quit tripping on that chick. All we heard all day long was Crystal this and Crystal that. And bro, I felt embarrassed. I felt embarrassed for my homeboy. I felt embarrassed for me for having to hear him. It's just like, you don't want that. Can you imagine? Your name gets brought up and what someone remembers about you. Oh, I remember that dude. I remember he kept tripping on his chick. You want someone to say, hey, you know your homeboy? He put it down. He represented the fullest. He was all the way down. He brought it, but no, tri he was a tripper. So, brother, no, never that. So, let's get on to it, dude. My brother, a month ago, someone tried to scam me on Instagram. Pretend to be my brother. I looked on Instagram. I got a follow from my brother. I was like, what? I know they have cell phones in prison. I, I thought he got a hold of a cell phone. You know, got an old Instagram account. So I just started following me. Like, okay. I don't know if I messaged. 
message him first or did he message me? I don't know. If I get up, there's communication. He starts talking back and forth. He's saying it's hungry. I said, oh, you want a foot-long meatball? We joke like that. It had it been my brother, that's, that was my first red flag. He didn't laugh when he said he was hungry. And I said, I bet you want a foot-long meatball. Dude didn't laugh. I was like, huh? And then he was saying, for show and bet, which is not stuff my brother says. And then I figured it out. Like, you're not my brother. But he gave me a hand signal at first before I figured it out. I was like, yeah, I'll send you some bucks. And he gave me a thumbs up emoji. It was a, it was a black hand. You know, you can get like different colors. So I knew right then there, I was like, hey, what's mom's name? What's this? What's that? He blocked me right away. I felt compelled to write my brother and say, dude, someone try to scam, blah, blah, blah. So my brother writes back and he has a little tiny bit of conversation for me. And I could tell by what he's saying that I think he might be on a questionable yard. So I'm going to tell you what he said. We're going to speculate a little bit and try to figure it out. And I wonder if you guys are saying splinter. What, bro? Here, here we are, you're saying your brother might be on a no-good yard, and you're just going to throw him out there, throw him under the bus, and just tell everybody? Yeah, yeah. He don't care. He wouldn't care. Now, all this is that's going to amount to, I don't want to tell you too much before we get there. I'm going to read the letter, part of it that's valuable to this conversation, relevant. What it's going to boil down to, now, I hope I don't lose you. Those who've done time, you're going to know what I'm talking about. I'll try to go slow. You have yards that are deemed no-good by the homeboys, but the prison system, CDCR, calls them good active yards. And they'll send good active inmates there. But the homeboys have said they're no good. So you get there as an active inmate to a yard the CDC says is active. But you know, no, I cannot program here. I need to take off on someone and leave. That's what it's going to boil down to. My brother's on one of those kind of yards. And when you get on trouble for being on not a good yard, you're not like a permanent... No good, PC, drop out. You just get a punishment. Next time they find you, next time they catch up with you. And bro, if it's that, and I'm sure it's that, my brother has been there and done that. Hey, homie, my brother is not the type of dude that gets sent to a yard. He gets endorsed to a yard, and he gets there or a building, and the homeboy says it's no good, and he take off on someone to leave. My brother's the type to get sent to a yard and get there and be like, what? Boop, boop. I'm here. He, dog. He's not the type to go and take off just because the homeboys say take off. He's not. How about I know that? Back in the day when C1 and C2 were deemed no good by the homeboys because bulldogs were there. And if you went there, you had 24 hours to take off. And if you didn't and it caught you slipping on A-yard, you'd get beat up. I was on A-yard. I see my brother. I seen this dude named Tim. Us three were walking a lap. My brother and Tim both confided to me at the same time. Hey, this came from C1. Those other program bulldogs. Now, my pride would never let me do it. If I went to a yard, the homeboy said, you had to take off, you can't program there, I would take off. Some people don't give a rip. My brother's one of them. So him and Tim could fight at me. Just came from a yard we're not supposed to be on. I was like, uh, you guys haven't been beat up yet? No, just kind of laying low. Then my brother on his last term went to Pleasant Valley. I know there's bulldogs there. I don't really know the rules or details or what exact yard. But I do know my brother don't give a rip. So, I'm sure that's what's going to be. So I'm really not fronting him off that bad. And not only that, dude, he's done way worse to me. Not to tit for tat or be a tattletale. But bro, come on now. I, uh, do you guys remember when I said I was in a county jail one time? My brother was on the streets. I conspired with some Southsiders in my block to have my brother go and collect thousands of dollars worth of narcotics on the streets. And to bring him into jail and drop him off to us. Because he had to come do a couple of days to turn himself in. So he just had to do like a couple of days, bro. Go pack your ass. Hooked him up, homie, to pack a fat. Got a couple thousand dollars worth of stuff and burned him. Didn't turn himself in. Left me in there hanging, dude. I could easily lost my life, bro. It's by the grace of God. I'm living and breathing, dude. How the circumstances have been slightly different. And he didn't know that. Bro. I go to jail. I had two things. Two of those. He steals one. Next day, next couple days, I go to jail. While I'm in jail, he breaks back into my garage again and steals some 20-inch rims. How do I know? Because later, this girl come to my pad. She saw a picture of my brother and me and him like this. She goes, oh, I know that dude. He sold my boyfriend some 20-inch rims. 500 bucks. Described them. It was, dude, even worse than that, one time I get kicked out of this spot. 
I was living in this trailer in this in this driveway that belonged to one of my homegirls. I got framed. Dude, it was like not guilty. I didn't do it. It all went south, bro. I, I looked like the bad guy. I had to move out. So I called my brother. Come through, home boy, and have a car at the time. Help me get all my stuff. And put all my stuff in his car. He went this way. I went that way. We're supposed to meet later. He ditched me, dude. He ditched me. He had all my clothes. He had all my stuff. And he has done it to me more than once, dude. One time, he threw a brick in my window, took all my clothes, and blamed it on mom. I was like, dude, you have my stuff? He's like, uh, mom did it. Dude, mom doesn't wear size nine shoes. She has, and I go see my mom. She has like a beanie, some size nine, like Converse. Like, what's up? Some dickies and a, and a belt and some... No, mom doesn't dress like that. It ain't happening. So anyways, bro, a little bit of dirty laundry for you. Let's get to the letter. My brother writes me. He's in Jamestown. He's in Jamestown. He's supposed to go to fire camp. They have two fire camps in California. Jamestown and Susanville. Fire camp's the best. When you go to fire camp, you're literally fighting fires. Some of those guys go from fire camp to actually become the firemen on the streets. In fire camp, you make money. You live outside the walls. You look like there's no really cops around. They eat different food. I mean, dog, there's like no supervision. It's love. It's the best place to do time. Before you can get to that outside fire camp, you have to go some little inside the gates, inside behind the walls, yard, and you have to do a physical, and you have to do all kinds of stuff. That's where my brother's at. He's at Jamestown on some yard waiting to go to fire camp. And he tells me, so, I stayed on this crap yard to get to fire camp. Like I tried telling these fools, I'm not a piece of shit. I'm the whole turd. See, he doesn't care. He don't give a rip. He's making fun of it. Because they'd say if you stay on the yard, it's no good. You're a piece of shit. My brother's like, I ain't no POS. I'm the whole turd, homeboy. Now what? Sound like he gives a rip to you? But he's staying on that yard, what? To get to fire camp. And most dudes would do that. It'd have to be a hardcore gangster to be like, no, I'm not going to program on this yard. Not even for a little while so I can get to fire camp. The end goes fire camp. I'm taking off and I'm going to go to the hole and go to the most people wouldn't do it. Most people wouldn't do it. Anyways, he says, this place is crazy, homie. It's a straight up bully yard. Bulldog. So I, and that's pretty much all he told me. The rest of this is, hey, give this letter to mom. He didn't say much to me. It's a bully yard. That tells me a lot. That tells me it's probably where the bulldogs are at. Woods and bulldogs have been at war for years. So probably the words on that yard, you can't program there. You have to go there and take off. But then again, how are you going to get to fire camp? You have to go... Eh. So, bro, just like a lot of people won't do this either. When you get released, your Wasco reception, they release you. They take you to R&R, they give you your $200, they give you some street clothes, you're getting ready to leave, and they bring the PCs in. Put the PCs in the same room with you. So now GP, active, and PC in the same cell, getting ready to leave. Are you going to take off on them as an active inmate? Oh, there's a PC, start fighting. Or are you going to just wait 10 more minutes and walk out the gates to get on that bus and go home? Bro, you're going to get on the bus and go home, dog. Shit, I had a PC like help me fix my beanie. He's like, no, it's crooked. I was like, oh, can you help me out? I, Hell no, I'm not going to take off on a PC when I'm five minutes, ten minutes to the house, brother. No. So, that's what's up with my brother. He's on some questionable yard. Probably deemed no good by the homeboys. He don't give a rip. He says, I ain't no POS. I'm a whole turd homeboy. They can pound it, dog. He's trying to get to fire camp. He don't care. When he gets out, he's going to go to Texas anyway. He says, I wish him the best of luck. That's it for now. Many more videos to come. Dude, I have this bomb video I'm working on. I had Dave make the thumbnail today. I can't wait to do it. Hope I can do it tomorrow. I know you guys are going to love it. I love putting it together. And I'm not quite done yet. I'm going to cut the string and let it fly. Peace.